All right, so we're going to return to the network folder so that you can get another handout that I have for you. This other handout is marked as number two, Webmaster Tools. So navigate back to that network folder, see if you can find it. I'll show you where it is in a moment if you forgot. But see if you can get back to that network folder, because as I said, I'm going to be giving out files throughout the course this way. I put it in my network folder, and then you can take it on your flash drive or, your, uh, or, or, or email it to yourself. The network folder, in case you forgot, is on the desktop. You'll open computer. You'll see a bunch of drives. One of the drives is in the network location, Classroom Data Z. Z as in zebra. Open the Classroom Data Z drive. Scroll down to my folder, which is Campus SEO. Open Campus SEO folder. And then get a copy of that number two Webmaster Tools. Just drag it to your desktop. If you were not here last week, you can get a copy of number one, long tail keyword strategy, which we talked about, and the syllabus. Oh, and also the client company profile. So those are the three things we looked at last week. The syllabus, of course, uh, a preliminary document, the client company profile, and then number one, activity number one, which is the long tail strategy. So those were last week. And this week, I'm putting in the marketing strategy that we just looked at, webmaster tools, and then also this drawing here of why. So once you've copied, once you've made a copy, once you've dragged from my folder to your desktop, now you can open it. And again, you can print these, but during the break, um, it's a bit noisy. So during the breaks, you can print. And now let's open up the, S, uh, the, the Webmaster Tools file. Just double click it. Oh, that's interesting. For some reason, my bullet points look like little tens. I don't know why, just uh, those are bullet points. Here I've got a bunch of concepts and things that we will accomplish together. Nowadays, it's harder to be found by potential clients. There is just so much competition. The best advice to rank, however, comes straight from the search engines themselves. So the thing about SEO is that you might think, well, this is, this is arcane knowledge and I have to take a class on it and uh, how will I ever know this stuff. Once I show you this, you will be able to further your education after this class because the search engines themselves tell you this is what you should do, this is what you should not do. The thing though is the big search engines, the two big ones, Google and Bing, they're in competition with each other obviously. They're in competition to show you the best search results. Their product, their service, is to give you the best top 10 results. Out of, the, out of the million results of the world. So Bing and Google both think they have the best algorithm, the best technique or method to show you what you're looking for. So some of this stuff will be trade secrets. Some of it will not be explicitly told to us because then they are giving away their trade secret to the competition. However, we will get about 90 to 95 percent of all of this information straight from the search engines, and then the other percentage comes from a couple of websites that I'll mention here and there that help fill in the gaps. So I believe I mentioned last week the website, remind me if I didn't, I believe I mentioned last week the website um, searchengineland.com, did I? Okay, so searchengineland.com. This is one of many websites that is on the cutting edge of what the search engines are doing, what you should be doing, tips and tricks and advice and such. Updated on a regular basis, we'll keep learning about the search engines. That's one, one place to, to get this information. Because again, sometimes the search engines don't tell you exactly how it all works. But what this and other companies do is they test theories, just like any good scientist. Uh, a scientific theory 
is an idea that then is tested and retested and then, you know, confirmed and so forth. So these companies like Search Engine Land make a test. Does it help if I've got a website uh, with dashes or with underscores or with none of those? So they test it. They make 500 websites with those three criteria and then they track how many hits did we get, how much, uh, how long did someone spend on the site, and then they create a hypothesis and then they create blog posts and then they um, put it up on the site and they say this, the theory seems to be that if you don't use uh, dashes, your site ranks better, as an example. So I would check out that site and you'll keep learning about SEO and SEM. Yes? Is it for just these Yeah, so the question is, what do you do with, with techniques that used to work that don't work anymore or maybe are detrimental? It depends on the technique. Um, for example, the dashes in your address, that, that one seems to be the consensus is that is sort of a marker of a low-quality site. There really isn't much to do about that. You can't rename your site. If I was amazing-web-design-sandiego.com, that's sort of a marker nowadays to the search engines. This might be a low-quality site because it's trying to forcefully use all the keywords in the title. Web design, San Diego, amazing. So some of these techniques that were they used to use it might now not work or are detrimental. You can't do much about them except start over. So you might have to start your website again with a, with a different kind of name that doesn't seem low quality like that. Or you might be able to accomplish other tasks that nullify that negative point. Uh, it really depends on your, on your site and again during breaks and such I can give you more detail about your particular needs. So let's skip these first sections for the moment, Google Webmaster and Bing Webmaster. Let's skip and go to page two or, sh or so. You should see conversion goals. Uh, it should be on page two, but if it's not, it's near the bottom. Conversion goals. You must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy my cupcakes. That's a conversion goal. In order to get to that goal, I have many conversion goals before that. Conversion comes from the, the concept of, let's say, you, you have a potential customer, and then you convert them into a customer. It was someone that did not buy your product, and you converted them. They did buy your product. A conversion. So you'll hear that term, conversions. Um, think of them as goals, basically. So my big goal is I want to sell more cupcakes. That, again, is easier said than done. Notice I have here a variety of smaller steps to reach that goal. Zoom in here. Now, I'm not saying you have to do all of these, but if you think about doing as many of these as you can, that helps get you to your ultimate goal. So, for example, get followers on Twitter. Now, how am I going to sell a cupcake on Twitter? Getting followers on Twitter creates a, a captive audience. So when, you are, when you're at home and you check your mailbox and you get all of that junk mail, well, for some of you, that's not junk mail. For some of you, those are amazing coupons. Or some of those are uh, little flyers to remind you, uh, come visit us to buy whatever. So you are a captive audience. Everyone gets that mail. Let's say you're watching television. You're watching a commercial. And if you watch the commercials, you are a captive audience to that, to, that, um, to that advertisement. And then eventually that advertisement might have uh, resonated with you and you followed through. Maybe I got a, yet another one of those uh, $5 off Bed Bath & Beyond coupons and then I used it. So the company um, put their message out to as many people as they could and then I eventually used it. Similar to Twitter, if I have followers, if I have 10 followers, 100 followers, 500 followers, and I tweet stuff, not ads all the time, because that has its own drawbacks, 
and I have those hundred followers, and if one of those followers buys a cupcake, that's a win. Yeah, that's a 1% or a 0.1% conversion rate, but still, from tweeting, from posting a cool picture and a link to buy the product, you get a sale? <coughs> that's amazing. So getting followers on social media like Twitter is a way to build a captive audience so that when you market to them, some amount of them will follow through. You'll have a return on your investment. ROI. Return on. Is it on or of? Return on investment. Return on investment. You invested the time to tweet, and the return is you made a sale, in theory. I want to get social interactions. I want to get likes and shares and comments on Facebook. Okay, so I've set up Twitter. I've also set up Facebook. Facebook is the largest social network in the world. It has about 1.3 billion users, not million, billion users. And there's about six or seven, I don't remember how many at the moment, seven billion people in the world. So one out of seven people are using Facebook in the world. For better or for worse, it's the largest social network. So what I want is to get is to get likes and followers and shares and comments on my Facebook because again I've got a captive audience that I'm marketing to I'm posting a picture I'm posting a beautiful photo of my cupcakes and yeah people will then click share and move on uh, click like and move on that's a fact people might click share and share that with their friends and family and then now your message on Facebook has been amplified to other people then maybe you get comments if someone is a little more interested in what you posted, they might take the time to write amazing cupcake. Or better yet, that's beautiful. That's so tasty. Where can I buy it? So I want interaction on social media because I want a I want my message to be spread to their followers. I might only have a hundred followers, but if a few of those followers retweet me or share, I've reached a few more people. Perhaps then we'll, that'll result in more follows, or even better, sales. I want to get site visits. I want people to visit my site through Google+. How many of you have heard of Google+, Plus before? Okay, if you haven't, that's Google's own social network. Um, Facebook was around first since 2004. Twitter came after that in 2006, I think. And then Google Plus came out in 2011, I believe, maybe 2012. So Google was seeing there's a lot of people that go to Facebook, and for them, the internet is Facebook. They spend all their time on Facebook. They play games on Facebook. They chat with their friends and family on Facebook. They search for companies on Facebook. And what, what is the big product that Google is all about? Search. They're trying to give you a page full of search results. And how are people going to use search if they're on Google search if they're on Facebook all day long? So Google said, we'll make our own social network where you can chat with friends and family, where you can play games, where you can share photos, where you can use the Google service to find what you're looking for. And you may have heard throughout the years very positive or very negative things about Google+. It's very polarizing. Personally, I love it. For me, Google Plus is my favorite social network on a personal level. I have lots of cool friends there. I have two million views there. I share something. People like it. Reshare. I meet a lot of interesting people. On a personal level, I really like it. For businesses, I recommend it also. But for businesses, Facebook is number one. Personally, I hate Facebook. I hardly log on. People say, why didn't you like my photo of my cat? Well, I haven't even seen it. I haven't logged in. I'm not going to request... I'm not going to take your, your your farm bill request. I'm not really going to comment and so forth. For business, Facebook is very important. For personal, I log in maybe once a month if I remember. I'm on Google Plus all the time. And so I'm saying here, if you invest in this social network, Google Plus, which is tied into Google Search and all of these Google services, that could get you more traffic to your site where I will sell my cupcakes. Question. Do you in your social media class, do you talk about the changing algorithms on Facebook? Too? Yeah, we need to. Yeah, we talk about that because, yes, um, 
Facebook itself has also changed their algorithm. It used to be that you could reach people easier on Facebook, and now not as easy. So I, I do talk about that in that class, what to, what to do about it. Yes? I have a question about the shares on Facebook. Um, sometimes on my business page, I'll share something that's not exactly within the realm of my business, but sure. something I think mm -hmm. people would be interested in. So when somebody shares that, and it's not actually content about my business, but they're sharing something about a ballet production or something, does that count equally in terms of boosting your visibility versus if they share something that's actually my original content? This is the thing about social media that to be always focused narrowly on one message then risks your message being lost. People will tune it out if you're always kind of tweeting or Facebooking about the same thing. So it does help to vary your content. Tap into a holiday that's coming up and maybe put your spin onto it. Maybe instead of sharing someone else's post about Valentine's, think about how can you incorporate Valentine's into your message. You might be a realtor, how can I use Valentine's? You know, we're having a great Valentine's showing this weekend. Come look at this beautiful little bungalow for you and your sweetie. You know, take the idea of Valentine's and how can I apply it to my particular business. So it is useful to share other people's content so that you're just not all single focused. And also a little better, share and create your own content but based on other ideas. Uh, so that's a balancing act. Yes. And on Facebook or the other um, social networks, mm -hmm. as a business, but primarily Facebook, how often should you post as a business? Like for uh, for any of these social networks, that's a very good question. How often to post? And you won't quite know that until you do it. But one goal to do is at least post something new and original to each of your profiles once a week. That's a good starting point. Better is once a day. Obviously much more work. Um, and of course in the social media class I go into more detail, but it may work for you to just post once a week and then you get great results. Maybe in the beginning it would be good for you to post twice a week and see how that works, or maybe even three times a week. And then as you start to build this audience, it sort of snowballs because popularity breeds popularity. So when you have no followers, you want to post as much as you can to try to get followers. As you get followers, you can cut down the posting a little bit, or even can even increase it to reach even more people. Yes? Um, something that I've learned is um, I, one of my WordPress, I, I put an article there, and then I Facebook, I keep the Facebook link, mm -hmm. and then that way I'm killing two stuff, you know, killing Two stones with one bird? Yes. Two birds with one stone. Okay. So it's like, and then what I like about it is not only the article in my Facebook, my my uh, website is there too. Yeah. You know, and so it just really looks professional. Yeah, so. So that's a really good point. Uh, what, what we were saying here was, if you've got a website like WordPress, it has the ability to share right from your site to your social media for you. So you don't have to be logging in and rem remembering to log into all your networks. If you use a, a website creation software like WordPress, it has a feature called Publicize, which is you post something new to your site and it will automatically go to Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and... Um, what else is there? A Google Plus and so forth. So that will do at least that for you, and it has already a link back to your website. That's useful. Yes? How is the message that I Hootsuite? Hootsuite? It works, it seems that it works better with certain social media accounts and other social media accounts. And it doesn't seem to do that well with Facebook, where people want it just work one time. In the social media class, I go more into detail with social media management software. One of them that people could look into is called Hootsuite, and another one is called Buffer, if you look those up. What those let you do is, I don't want to log into all three of my networks every time. I want to log in once to Buffer, schedule a post, and it will automatically go to my networks for me. So this is a time saver right there, Hootsuite or Buffer. They will let you post to the networks for you and on a schedule. You can tell it, make a, post a tweet every week on Monday, 
and then post on Facebook every day on every week on Tuesday and then post something on Google Plus every Wednesday. You schedule this queue, you schedule this pool of content and it'll automatically post it for you throughout the week or months. I think they have a, an aspect, a tier of it that is paid. You can get a free aspect of it, a free version of it, and then a, a more powerful, full, fuller featured paid version. Yes. Yes, she, she, was, uh, she was first. Go ahead. I got a question directly related to that. On my WordPress site, I have everybody like Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, etc. Uh -huh. I have a great picture, I have a great tagline, it goes out. When I go to the other sites, Twitter, Instagram, you get text. Mm -hmm. Picture is a link. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to control that, or does Buffer or Hootsuite actually send that? And it's frustrating because you go into Instagram, which is so photo heavy. Mm -hmm. And you get this little blue box. Hmm. Here to see the yeah. Yeah, the, that's the problem. Sometimes this sort of uh, uh, shotgun approach doesn't fully work. So that is true. It's not just me. I it is. Right it way. is true. That's right. Uh, look into these. Off the top of my head, I don't remember how, how, it, how it looks exactly. But I know that Buffer, I don't believe Buffer shares to Instagram at the moment. So you'd have to do it manually anyway. But Instagram is still very special because really Instagram is a mobile app. It's not really a website. You can browse people's stuff on the website, but really to comment, well, I guess you can comment, but to post, which is the big one, it really has to be done via the app. And I know there's been a couple of companies that I've seen that they will let you post through their website. But from what I read about it, I wouldn't trust it because what it's doing is it's 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 funneling your picture through their account to post it to your account because really you you need to post on Instagram through an app on your phone not through the website so if you're not getting the exact results you're looking for you might have to do it manually or look into these other ones yes so when you're saying to post to all these different social media outlets mm -hmm. um, you can post the same content on each one yeah you so could but you could, but uh, ideally, you do at least craft the message to each network or vary it. What I mean is that if you write a brand new blog post on your, on your website and it's 200 words long, those 200 words are not going to show on Twitter. It's going to show a couple of them and then it's going to get cut off and then the link, maybe a picture. And then on Facebook, Maybe if someone doesn't want to read those whole 200 words, they want the first paragraph, and then if they want to read more, they go back to your site. So it is a time saver to send your content to the different networks via one of these methods, but the problem with that is that the message is not crafted. So uh, what we do for our company is we do employ some aspects of the auto-posting and such, but we also definitely go in and craft the message, make it shorter, uh, make it uh, more effective per network. And you can post the same thing to the different networks, but again, craft it. That same picture I post to all the networks, but maybe different text. Or also, again, completely different thing to each network, because that way you can entice people, well, why would I also follow you on Twitter if I'm already on Facebook? Well, Twitter is where you're going to get the exclusive coupons, not Facebook. That's one possible way to get people to follow you on more networks, exclusive content. Yes? Yes, for business and personal, I think, I think Twitter is, is helpful because, as we'll see if we get into Facebook, you're going to be a needle in a haystack in Facebook, and Facebook, the company itself, is making it harder for the needle to stand out. Um, Twitter, at the moment, is still very, very open. You can reach a lot of people. Um, with with less effort than with Facebook. Um, so I think Twitter still is very viable and useful. And now that Twitter is a publicly traded company, meaning it's in the stock market, just like Facebook, they uh, are, of, of course, always wanting to please their investors and wanting to make it easier and better for people or companies to use. So changes are, changes are afoot on Twitter, hopefully positive ones for businesses and people. But it is a valuable service, definitely. Finding out the dynamics of uh, what Twitter's about. I mean, Facebook is obvious, uh, but you know, I don't know much about Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know what it is, mm -hmm. but how to utilize it for myself 
is that just more through, I don't really want to go through experimentation and maybe you know, uh, create an issue for myself down the line. Mm -hmm. Is there, a, does it have, uh, I guess there's information out there on it and how to utilize it best for yourself? Uh, Definitely, you can always search um, the terms um, using Twitter for business. But also, I'm going to teach a class next month where I, where I go in depth, in depth about using Twitter for business, uh, you know, with lectures and handouts and such. So, of course, you can still be looking into uh, how, to, how to look, uh, how to use Twitter or other social networks for, for business and also take a class. Uh, so, let me take a quick segue on that because social media is a big thing. For us again, this uh, social media is all the SEM stuff, search engine marketing. What do you do outside of your site? SEM, social media. So let me mention this site, this site of the day, social media examiner.com. SocialMediaExaminer.com is one of many websites out there that will give you tips and advice and how-tos and give you the latest news about social media. What's, what's the new algorithm in Twitter? What can you do on Facebook? Top 5 Facebook, like right here, top 10 Facebook apps for building custom page tabs. The Social Media Marketing Industry Report 2012. How QR codes can grow your business. So uh, Social Media Examiner, it's a blog, it's all about social media. Uh, they are going to try to sell you things here and there, like uh, the full featured guide and so forth, but you're still going to get a lot of free, great content from the site. This is how this company, their online presence, the goal of their site, from what I can tell, is again, sell their social media expertise, goods or services. Um, how do they do it? Via putting uh, free guides, free tutorials. Why would I care? Well, uh, I like the design of it, I like the aesthetic, I like how it's friendly and fun. Um, I like that they give, you know, a 52-page marketing guide with 80 charts and um, how to create huge Facebook communities without advertising. All of that. They do videos. So you can see the the what, the how, and the why as you look as you look through this particular site. They give you a lot of content for free like this 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 podcast right here. You can listen to this episode and then as I as I check out the site and I see okay well I need to purchase some of the premium stuff then I can um, I can buy that. For example there's a there's a social media marketing society seminar, which I'm sure is not free. Probably a couple hundred dollars. That's one way. They um, possibly make money. So the next conversion goal that I could have um, get more hits on my home page. I want to get more traffic to my website, victorsbakery.com. Even though I might have lots of followers on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, at the moment, as one of the little guys, a small company, I cannot sell my products on a social network yet. If I'm Amazon, you can buy something via tweet. Did you know that? If Amazon tweets something and you want it, all you have to do is tweet to them and your credit card is charged. Your credit card is charged, and you bought something via tweet. I'm not Amazon size at the moment. Uh, Pinterest as well. They are experimenting, and, and some retail retailers, the big ones, have a way for them to pin something on Pinterest, and then there'll be a buy button. But not us, the little guys, yet. Same thing on Facebook. The point is, at the moment, for the short term, and I don't know how long that'll be just yet, maybe a year, um, at the moment, we cannot sell our products directly on any social network. We have to sell a product on our homepage, or on Etsy, or on eBay, or my Amazon Marketplace shop, or whatever. I can't sell anything directly on social media. So therefore, the audience that we're building on social media, ultimately, is to guide them back to our site. 
So people come into my classes and say, well, why would I care about Twitter? Why am I going to waste my time on Facebook? That's where the teenagers are talking about dumb stuff. Why would I get on, on social media? All of that is a form of marketing to guide people to your ultimate goal of your website where they then can buy your product, buy your service, subscribe to your newsletter, hire you as a consultant, etc. So I want to get traffic to my home page, my website, because that's where I will actually complete my ultimate conversion goal. I want to get more shares on my blog posts from my site. Well, let's back up. I want to be blogging on my site. I teach the, a blog class. Blogging is important for SEO. Blogging um, on a regular basis puts out more of your content, more of your message, more of your presence online. If you've got an amazing website that you paid $2,000 for, but it hasn't been updated in a year, your money might not be working for you. If, however, you are updating it with a blog once a month, is a good goal, something new on the blog once a month, you're putting more of your content, more of your presence online, so when someone searches for vegan cupcake recipes, and my bakery had a blog post about that, my blog will show up, they read my recipe, they make the cupcake themselves, and maybe buy a cupcake. So that works by blogging, making it easier for people to share that post on their social media, so now their Twitter followers see my recipe, and maybe some of those Twitter followers will follow my Twitter or go back to my website and maybe buy the cupcake. So blogging is important for SEO. An email newsletter. I should have written here email newsletter, but it should be obvious. I want to get more subscribers to my email newsletter. If you don't have a newsletter, this is something you might think about. Is there something that you'll be able to send out on an email blast every once in a while? Whatever once in a while works for you. Once a month, once a week, once a quarter, whatever. The point is that the purpose of these newsletters, here's the big secret, why is every website trying to get you to sign up to the newsletter? So they can capture your email and market to you. And you may hate that. I don't want my email on someone's marketing list, but you might want that for your website. Obviously you'll be doing it for legitimate purposes. You're not going to be spamming them, just like you don't want to be spammed. So I want people to sign up for my newsletter. How will I entice them to do that? Exclusive coupons only available on the newsletter. You put on your website, subscribe to our newsletter. That's not good enough. Subscribe to our newsletter for exclusive content, exclusive coupons, exclusive sales. Entice people to subscribe to get, the, to get that carrot. And then now you have their email so that then once in a while you can send them an email that says, Sale this Saturday. Don't hesitate. 10% off this weekend and it and it works I know for myself I sub I subscribe to the Fry's Electronics newsletter and every time I read it I want to buy something there but I have to be strong and wait till payday but if you get people on your newsletter some amount of those people are going to follow through again your return on investment it does take the time and the effort to craft to craft that email and to make that ad and that coupon and so forth. But some amount of people will follow through. The more subscribers you have, the percentage, maybe it's only 1% for the life of your site, but 1% of you know 10 people is maybe one sale. 1%, um, no, even less than that, isn't it? 1% of 100 people is one sale. So then you need 1,000 people on your newsletter. So that might be 10 sales and so forth. Next, I might want to get virtual clients, which are followers on social media, to come to my physical location. In my case, I'm a bakery. I have a physical location down on Main Street. I want people to buy my cupcakes. I don't sell my cupcakes on the website. I, don't, I haven't implemented that yet. I want people to come to the location. So I have to think about strategies about how to get those virtual followers that are in the area to come to the, 
location. Because ultimately that's where I'll sell something, in person. So one of these clients, like I said, they have followers on social media, and then they uh, have a partnership with a local radio station that you can come meet the DJs at the restaurant. So if you really like that DJ, you want to meet her, you, you go to the restaurant, you're going to meet her and get a, an autographed shirt, and maybe you'll stay and buy also something in the restaurant. That obviously takes the effort of creating the partnership between the restaurant and the radio station or personality, and then tweeting about it and putting it on Facebook and promoting it on social media to get those virtual followers that maybe really only see me on the app to get them to come to the restaurant for one purpose, and then the other is for them to buy the product. And ultimately, my final goal, my big conversion, is to sell cupcakes. So you should see that it's a long, involved process to get from point A, a potential client follows you on Twitter, to point Z, the follower visits the store and buys a product. That is why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing. So it's pretty easy for someone to favorite your tweet, to share your Facebook post, to repin you. It's even harder for them to click that button that says buy now. So the more that you do to entice that action, to complete that conversion, the better. An emerging term that takes both into account, SEO and SEM, is content marketing. And you can read that blog post there. What is content marketing? That's the term that I see emerging a bit more. It's sort of a merging of the two terms, but it's both content. It's both um, concepts. Content marketing. Um, marketing, a synonym for advertising and you may have a positive or negative opinion of advertising and marketing, but it works. That's why companies spend millions of dollars to get the message out. And maybe for you it never affects you, but you are one of 330 million residents of the U.S. You are one of, you know, a billion residents of the world. There are going to be many, 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 many people who that message resonates with and they follow through. So don't, so don't discount some of these things if, for you, they don't seem to apply. They will apply to others. Yes? In um, locale, let's say, um, for your cupcake business, I mean, being it's purely local, um, but you have different aspects of a business, whether, let's say, part of that business would be uh, consulting on how to uh, make those cupcakes, you know, to make your version of it. That's, that's something you would want to put out, then that would become more of an international uh, or global uh, service that you want to provide. Um, is there something that uh, keeps, let's just say, because your site is local, because what your physicality is is local, um, but yet you want that aspect of your services to be global. Mm -hmm. Is there something that differentiates that uh, in, in a search? Or, um... Yes, um, so you're, you're saying we'll have an aspect of the business where it's a physical location to sell the cupcakes, and let's say another aspect where it's virtual, as in let's say uh, an, an, like an online culinary course. I want to sell five-minute videos on how to bake. So there's a virtual and there's a real. Um, and yeah, basically, whatever the person is searching for, they will eventually find. So the differentiation is, in a sense, automatic, as in what is the content that you're putting out there. If someone is searching for, let me go to the location to buy that product, that's what most likely they'll find. But if they're searching for, you know, best uh, baking, uh, you know, b baking uh, courses, then they might find your baking course because you're also marketing that, you're tweeting about that, you're putting it out there. So people should find the content that they're looking for if you are marketing it focused on what the particular goods or services are. So let's say your tweets, and you're tweeting, and you tweet for 
one aspect of your site and then tweet to a different aspect of your site and have those searches do their own work. Yeah. Yeah, posting tweets on each particular aspect of your site to target that particular audience. And then if we do get into the more focused social media, as in, as in, um, as in uh, paying uh, for using social media, because uh, we have the free aspect of social media and we have the paid aspect. We can pay to boost our tweet, meaning our tweet will be shown to more likely people that would care about it. Facebook as well. I can pay some amount of money to show it to the more interested parties, as little as a dollar, as much as a thousand dollars or more. Yes, we can target for free or for paid those audiences that really would care about the particular aspect of the business. So we have some things to think about within this conversion goals section. Again, you don't have to do all of these things. These things are not fully spelled out. I tried to go into some detail in the lecture, but not every detail is written here. Um, some of these things, I have to go into detail them, about them in other classes, like the social media class. I go into detail how to use a Twitter and Google and Facebook and Instagram effectively. I talk about, in the blogging class, how to write effective blog content. Um, and then other concepts of SEO, we talk about them in here. So it's a big ball of wax, different pieces of this puzzle in different classes. Um, any questions on this section? Conversion goals. All right, let's take uh, one more break and we come back. Then we'll back up and we'll actually do these first sections, setting up the webmaster tools. It's 11.05. We'll be back at... 11:15. Uh,